Okay, so in this video, we will discuss limits at infinity in the case of polynomials and rational functions. Now, a limit at infinity is either the limit of a function as x approaches positive infinity or as x approaches negative infinity. You'll see in the case of polynomials and rational functions, this makes very little difference. Let's start with a simple example. The limit as x goes to positive infinity of say x squared minus 6x minus 5. And you'll see if we use our intuition, when we consider powers of x and we let x approach positive infinity, the only power that matters is the larger power. Think of it as x, x squared, x cubed and so on. Just take x equals 10. You have 10, 10 squared is 100, 10 cubed is 1,000, 10 to the 4 is 10,000, 10 to the 5 is 100,000, and so on. And you can easily see that just for x equals 10. The greater the power, the greater the actual numerical value. And this is even more obvious when x is even larger. Take x to be 100. Well, x squared is 10,000 x cubed is a million, and so forth. So the larger the power, when x is big, the larger the expression. Now let's look at this limit now, and see how, if we use the intuition that when x is getting larger and larger, the dominant term is the greater power of x, we can easily solve or figure out these limits. So if we look at the case, when x approaches infinity, x squared will also approach infinity. Minus, as x goes to infinity, 6x also goes to infinity, so we have minus infinity, and then minus 5. We could drop the 5 if we wanted, but ultimately we have something very big minus something very big. So what's going to happen here? All we have to do is factor the larger power of x, which is And as soon as we factor the larger power of x, we'll have essentially a trivial case. So if we factor x squared, then we're left with 1 minus 6 over x minus 5 over x squared. You can multiply out the check. x squared times 1 is x squared. x squared over x is x. And this will cancel and you'll get back your negative 5. Now look at the case. As x approaches positive infinity, so does x squared times, well, as x goes to infinity, 6 over x, if you think about this, if you divide 6 by a number that is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the whole fraction will be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so this will shrink to 0. The same for 5 over x squared. As x goes to positive infinity, so does x squared. And so 5 over x squared will be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and will also shrink to 0. So the second term will be approaching 1. And so now we have, by factoring out the larger power of x, being x squared, the case is now infinity times 1, which obviously gives up an answer that is infinity something really, really, really big times 1 is something really big. And that's it. Always a one-line solution. Let's do another example. This will always be the case. Whenever you have a limit at infinity involving a polynomial, you'll always have a one-line solution. By factoring the larger power of x, you'll be essentially done. Now, let's look at this limit as x approaches negative infinity. Let's look at our case. As x goes to negative infinity, as 3 is odd, x cubed goes to negative infinity times 2 approaches negative infinity. x approaches negative infinity, x squared will approach positive infinity. If we negate that, you get negative infinity once again, 
plus 9. And here the case is trivial. Negative infinity, negative infinity will give us negative infinity plus 9. Still just negative infinity. And this will be again apparent. We don't need to do this, but just for practice, if we were to factor the x cubed, then we'll be left with 2 minus 1 over x plus 9 over x cubed. As x goes to negative infinity, so does x cubed times 1 over x will give us a 1 over negative infinity. 9 over x cubed will give us a 9 over negative infinity, so both these terms will shrink to 0. And we'll be left with a 2 here. And that is our case. So we have a negative infinity times 2 case, which gives us, obviously, again, as we sign the first case, negative infinity. So if the case is trivial, you don't need to factor. But even if it is non-trivial, by factoring the greater power of x, you will be done in one line. And whenever you let x approach positive or negative infinity, in the case of a polynomial, there are only two possible answers, either positive or negative infinity. What about not considering rational functions? Will this be much different? The answer is not really. Other than the fact that we can obtain several different answers, the idea is the same. Assume you have 2x plus 3 over 4x minus 1. As x goes to positive infinity, 2 times x will go to positive infinity plus 3 will give us infinity over 4x will also go to infinity, minus 1 is also going to infinity. So we have an infinity over infinity case. As x approaches positive infinity, both the numerator and denominator of our fraction approach infinity. So we have something big over something big. It's not clear what's going to happen. The idea is, once again, to pull out the greater power of x. Now, it is the same on top and on the bottom. It's x to the 1. And there's two ways you can look at this. You can either factor x top and bottom, or You can multiply top and bottom by 1 over x. This will be maybe a little easier later on to use this method, so we'll use it right away. So the greater power of x is 1, x to the 1, and so we multiply top and bottom by 1 over x. We're not cheating here, as 1 over x over itself is equal to 1. So we are multiplying the expression by 1, so it is still the same expression. If we multiply out now, this is where things are interesting. 2x over x is 2, plus 3 times 1 over x, 3 over x, over 4x times 1 over x is 4, minus 1 times 1 over x, 1 over x. And of course, as x goes to positive infinity, 3 over x and 1 over x will both shrink to 0. And we'll be left with 2 over 4, which is just 1 half. And we're done. That easy. Let's do two more examples, say. What if we had x approaching positive infinity again? Let's go with 3x to the 4 minus x squared minus 1 over 5x to the 4 plus x cubed plus 1. Let's look at the case that we have. Now here we can use our intuition that we've developed earlier on. If you look at the numerator, you could be tempted to say, well, as x goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, this goes to infinity. So you'd have infinity minus infinity minus 1. As the dominant term is x to the 4, these two terms don't really matter. So really what we have on top is 
positive infinity. The denominator is obvious. It's a sum of powers of x, so we'll still get positive infinity. The only difference here is that the greater power now is x to the 4, and so we'll multiply top and bottom by 1 over x to the 4. And this will allow us to figure out that the limit is going to be 3 over 5. And once again, this is legitimate, because if you look at 1 over x to the 4 over itself, this is simply 1. So we are not changing the expression. Let's multiply through by 1 over x to the 4. The numerator will become 3 minus 1 over x squared minus 1 over x to the 4 over 5 plus 1 over x plus 1 over x to the 4. And now, once again, we have a trivial limit. As x goes to infinity, 1 over x squared shrinks to 0, 1 over x to the 4 shrinks to 0, 1 over x shrinks to 0, and again, 1 over 4 shrinks to 0. As any constant term over infinity will shrink to 0, because something constant over something that is getting larger and larger and larger is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and we're left with, quite simply, 3 over 5. You see, you could have guessed this right away, because when x approaches infinity, the only terms that matter are the ones with the greater powers of x. And so here, these terms don't really matter. Same for these terms. Even though they are large, they are insignificant compared to the fourth power of x. And so we're really left with something roughly 3x to the 4 over 5x to the 4, both of which will cancel and will give us three-fifth. Now you may ask, well, what if the larger power on top is different than the one on the bottom? Does it really matter? And the answer is no. You can pick out either the one on the top or the bottom. Let's consider a simple example of this. And this will be our last example of this video. Let's let x approach negative infinity, and we'll take 3x plus 1 over, say, x squared minus x plus 2. If you look at the case that we're in, as x goes to negative infinity, 3x will go to negative infinity plus 1, still negative infinity. Here we'll use our intuition, even though we don't really need to, as negative x will go to positive infinity. And so this x squared, so we have positive infinity. So we have a negative infinity over infinity case. Again, this is not trivial. Something big over something big, it's not clear what's going to happen here. If you could look at the numerator, the larger power of x is 1, x to the 1. For the denominator, it is x squared. So what do we do here? Do we do 1 over x over itself, or do we do 1 over x squared over itself? The answer is it doesn't matter. So let's do it both ways. Let's multiply top and bottom first by 1 over x. Let's see what happens. On top, we'll be left with 3 plus 1 over x. On the bottom, x minus 1 plus 2 over x. Let's look at our case now. As x goes to negative infinity, 1 over x will be shrinking to 0. 2 over x also shrinks to 0. So the numerator will approach 3 over 
negative infinity negative 1 is negative infinity. So we have a 3 over negative infinity case. If you divide by th if you divide 3 by something that is getting larger and larger and larger, the result will of course be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so it will shrink to 0. And we're done. Let's see what would have happened if we had used instead of 1 over x, 1 over x squared over 1 over x squared. Let's multiply through. So on top we'll have 3 over x plus 1 over x squared over 1 minus 1 over x plus 2 over x squared. Again we consider a case. As x goes to negative infinity, 3 over x and 1 over x squared both shrink to 0 as they gave us constant terms over negative and positive infinity, 1 over x, so the numerator shrinks to 0, over 1 over x shrinks to 0, 2 over x squared shrinks to 0, and so our denominator will be approaching 1. So you see we have a different looking case. With the 1 over x over itself, we had 3 over negative infinity case, with 1 over x squared over itself, we have a 0 over 1 case. doesn't matter as it yields the exact same answer. If something shrinks to 0 and it is divided by 1, it still shrinks to 0. And that's it. So you see it doesn't matter. If the larger powers on top and on the bottom are the same, go ahead, divide top and bottom by that power, even though they are or they may be different, it doesn't matter which one you single out, you will arrive at the same answer. So either single out the greater power of x on the numerator and divide top and bottom by it, or single out the greater power on the denominator and divide top and bottom by it, and you will arrive at the same answer. And that's it. In our next video, we'll consider such limits when we have fractional powers, such as square roots, cube roots, and so on. Everything works the same, except there is, in some cases, an additional twist.